They are just, you know, the things they can do easier, they will do. But the things that is hard for, harder for them to do, they don't do. Then God is not the king of the heart. And then, you know, then God knows that. And even though it looks like part of his life he's obeying God, part of his life is not obeying God. Actually, when it, this is happening, he's actually, you know, doing certain things because it's easier for him. But in his heart, he's reluctant to let God take over his life. So he's really rejecting God. When he's rejecting God in part of his life, actually he's rejecting God in his whole life. That he's rejecting God to take over his life. So I hope that we understand this and say, Lord, I want you to be my king. I want you to be my king in my heart, that you rule over my heart, that you are the king of my heart, you take over my heart, that you guide me, you strengthen me, and you give me strength. So, so you will let God seek the first His kingdom and His righteousness. Now the righteousness first means His righteous rope of Jesus Christ, that He give us His righteousness, that, that God count us, God counts us as righteous when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. And the second is, He will, you know, also our righteous acts, the Christian righteous acts, that we love God, love people, do evangelism, help other people, strengthen the spiritual life, then, he, then we are pursuing Christian righteousness. So it's both, both the righteousness of Christ and our righteousness. So we seek righteousness and let God be the king, then all these things will be given to us. So the key to receive blessings from God is not just to ask. It's to seek His kingdom, want more people to believe in Jesus and follow Jesus and obey Jesus and let God take over our whole hearts. Let me use that illustration again. Husband and a wife, okay? So the husband is willing to do certain things for the wife. He, you know, things that he likes to do. He likes to do, you know, uh, hope you don't mind me to say, he likes to have sex with the wife. He likes to eat with the wife. He likes to do different things. But there's one thing he doesn't change. He still likes to look at other beautiful women. Whenever he sees a beautiful woman, he looks at a woman. In a wife's heart, when, he no when she noticed that the husband, even though he likes to do things with me, but whenever he sees a beautiful woman, he will stare at that woman, then she would see that the husband's heart is re not really on her, but on other beautiful women. So it's the same for God. If we, okay, I'm willing to praise God and worship God and, and uh, preach and, and drive out demons for people, but for me, to totally change my life, to let God take away my unforgiveness. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want to. I, I just let God rule over this part of my life. But this other part, let me stay in those. Like some people, they stay in pornography. And they think that, okay, uh, pornography is watching sex movies or sex uh, photos online. And, you know, online now is very easy to get those. But then those are very destructive and also will destroy God's blessings. Uh, it will stop God's blessings flowing to us. So we need to understand that. And also then we're not letting God be our king of our heart. So I hope you understand when we let God be the king of our heart. He's totally my king. I totally submit to him. And I seek his righteousness. And all these things will be added to me. And he is happy with me. So again, the, uh, the nature of God is He is abundant, He has everything, He is generous, He is willing to give us all things. And it's Him who gives us the heart to seek His kingdom and His righteousness. It's Him who changes our hearts so that we will seek His kingdom and His righteousness. It's Him who changes our, uh, revive our spiritual life. So I thank God He revives our spiritual life. And then whenever I obey the Holy Spirit, I submit to the Holy Spirit. He's very happy and He'll give us all things. So He'll pay attention to how we obey Him and love Him and let Him be the Lord and He's very happy. So God loves us and wants to give us the best. So this is His, uh, His grace. To seek God's kingdom means we help more people to enter, to be born again and let Him rule over us.
when God rules, where God rules is His kingdom. And to seek His righteousness means to obey Him and also to have the righteous robe of Jesus. When we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, He will give us all the things needed to enter His will. All the things. Now, we don't, you know, many, many people just seek prosperity. Um, God will give us prosperity, but we should not have the eyes set on prosperity. Now, the prosperity gospel, the problem with that is that they set the eyes of people on prosperity. They will say, okay, give more money, and then God will give you more money back. When we have this heart, I give because I want more money back. That is not real giving. That is exchanging. That is like trying to entice God to give us more. You know, we should be giving to God willfully, joyfully, happily. When I give to God, God is very, very happy. And even if I'm still poor, I'm still happy that I give to God. And God will see that and He will reward us and bless us. And the blessing is for us to enter His will. It's not just for prosperity, not just for wealth, more money. You know, it's for fulfilling His kingdom, His will. That God wants us to fulfill His will, to enter His perfect plan. So hope we all see that. You know, when we enter God's perfect plan, God is very, very happy and He's happy. He is happy to bless us. So we want to seek God, His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be given to us. Now many people, so uh, uh, let me explain more fully. Prosperity gospel put the emphasis on you get more by doing something. By giving money, then you get more money back. Uh, the, the motivation is wrong. We should be giving to God because God is so good. I'm happy because of God. I'm thankful to God. And I want to please God by giving. And I trust that God will make my life go higher so that I can fulfill His plan. Not, not just so that I can have more money. So that I can fulfill His plan and fulfill His, His plan in my life and in other people's life. So God wants to use my life. When, the, when I dedicate my life to God, when I uh, uh, follow His will, then all these things will be added to me. Instead of seeking prosperity. Because yesterday someone asked me, uh, if the pastor is always saying, okay, give and then you'll get more money back. Now, actually we should not you know, we should not say this to people. Give so that you get more money back. But we should say, God has so many blessings God wants to give you. When you give to Him, God is very happy. He will bless you. But we don't think of, oh, I give Him $100, then He'll give me $1,000 back. We don't think like that. We just think, when I give to God, I'm happy to give to God. I'm happy to, to offer to God. I'm happy to, to give my best to God. So God is happy. And just think like that and believe in that. He will bless me. I don't have to ask God, please, I have given you $100. Please give me $1,000 back. We don't have to ask God and we don't have to have this intention in my mind. And also, we, we don't want to think of like, uh, okay, when I give uh, a lot of money, then my whole life, everything will be uh, you know, I have a lot of, then I'll have a lot of money, then I'll have very good health, I'll have all, everything uh, needed. We don't think of, I, you know, I give so that I can get this. We just trust God will do this, but we don't have, but we don't serve God in order to get blessings. Our eye is not on the blessings we get. Our eyes is on God, to please God. And I trust in God's goodness, to trust in His goodness. And not to just to draw God's blessings. The purpose is to please God and to make the best of our life so that we can bless more people. And trusting that God will bless us. But our will, our purpose is not say, I give so that you'll give me more. So the difference between uh, the biblical teaching uh, and the uh, prosperity gospel teaching, the difference is in the intention. The prosperity uh, teaching is telling people, you give, then you get more money back. Then it's, it's like enticing people to give so that they'll get money back. It's, you know, sometimes it's, 
is some people, they want people to give more money to the church, so they use this to motivate people to give. But instead, we'll say, God is so good, so wonderful, we want to give freely to God. We want to give happily to God, and God is happy with that. When God is happy with that, He'll bless my whole life. Not necessarily money back. Now, He can give money back, but He can bless my whole life so I have more joy, more strength, so my whole life can go to a high level. Okay? Now, number five, many people have problems because they don't seek God's kingdom and righteousness. Because many people suffer because they, they are, you know, they, they don't seek God's kingdom. They don't want to bring people to Christ. They don't let God be the king. They let sin stay in their life, and they don't seek God's righteousness and their own righteousness. Okay, and motivate people to pray. John six forty four. No one can come to me, Jesus, unless the Father who sent me draws him. So here it tells me, tell us that. The Father draws people to come to Jesus. So it's God who works in us first. God who works in us to draw us to Jesus, to believe in Jesus. So it's God who takes the initiative. So what is God's nature? God's nature is He, he has a love for all people. He wants all people to be in Him. And He works. He has the ability to work in people's heart in order to draw them. He has the ability to draw people to Him. And then His grace is He will draw us to Him. He will attract us to Him through His Holy Spirit. And His Word, He will attract people to come to Jesus. So God is, you know, He has His nature that He can draw people and He likes people. He likes people to be with Him and He has the ability to draw people to Him. So God draws us to come to Jesus. So God wants us to come close to Him. So that is His grace. He, he wants us to come to Him. He likes us to come to Him. It is God who takes the initiative to attract us to Him. So we don't have to worry that God does not accept us. So God who takes the first step to attract us to Him. So we don't have to worry that God doesn't accept us. Whenever we come to Him, He will for sure accept us. He is for sure that He likes us when we come to Him. Lord, I like you. I like you. I worship you. I worship you. I adore you. I know that you're happy with that. I know that you're always, because it's you who draw us to come to you first. It's you who draw us. So for sure, you will be happy when we come to you. And then three, even when we sin or are lazy to pray, he will still try, he's still trying to attract us back to him. So he would try to draw us back to Him. There are many times in our life that we're not close to Him, but He'll continue to draw us back to Him. So it's not just a one-time action. It's a whole life. Actually, now we can come to God because God draws us. God changes our nature so that we draw us, so that we are drawn to come to Jesus. It's God who changes our nature. God gives us the desire to come to Him. So even when we are weak, He still continues to draw us. Actually, He draws us to Him every day. So we can be confident that it's not hard to come to close to God, and it's not hard for God to come to us. So it's not hard for God to come to us, he, because He wants to come to us. Anyway, He draws us. So whenever we pray, for sure He will hear my prayer. So every time we pray, we can say, for sure God is hearing my prayer. For sure God wants to bless us when we have the right motive. Now some people, they just want the problem solved. They, they don't really want God, they want the problem solved. They say, God please come to give me money, please give me help, please solve my problem. It's just always asking for something. They set their eyes on these things, instead of setting their eyes on God. So when we pray, we want to set the eyes on God. I want God. When I have God, I have everything. And it's God who draws me to Him. Therefore, for sure, when I come to Him, for sure He comes to me. Actually, He comes to me first to draw me to come to Him. It's Him who attracts me to pray to Him. So when I pray to Him, for sure He'll respond to me. So it's not hard to come to God. That way, we have confidence. Now, every day when I wake up, I say, I rejoice in the Lord because God is happy. God is happy that I come to Him. God is happy that I, I pray to Him. And so every day I say, Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I love you. I like you. And the moment I say this, I, I also I declare the interactive prayer 
that I know God is your happy. So I'm happy too. You're happy. Ha ha ha. <laughs> and I'm happy too. And when I come to you, you're happy and I'm happy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have confidence because you're drawing me to you. And so when I come to you, you're very, very happy. You are like the father who draws the children to come to you. So when we come to you, you're very, very happy and for sure you'll bless us. So this will give us confidence to pray. So I hope you can see this teachings so how important it is that when we can draw people to believe in Jesus, to trust in Jesus, to have a close relationship with God, then our whole life will be blessed and, it, it, and it's relaxing to come to God. Okay, and then another verse to motivate us to pray, James 4, 8. Draw near to God and He will, he will draw near to you. So it's God who comes one who comes to us. When we come to Him, for sure He will come to us. And when He comes to us, He causes us to bear more much fruit and He will cause us to be joyful and have strength. God treasures our relationship with Him. So this is His nature, that He sees us as very important. John 6, 44 tells us that God tries to attract us to Him. When we respond and come close to Him, He will come close to us. So when we come to, close to Him, He is very happy, for sure He will come to us. Where God is, He will bring blessings and raise us to a high level. So He will bless us and He will bring us to a high level. When we think of praying, we should think of building up a loving relationship with God. And this will help us to enter God's plan. So when we pray, we think of we are building a relationship with God. I am rejoicing in God. I am enjoying God. I am in God's presence and God is surrounding me. God is in me. God is holding me. God is hugging me. God is with me all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're with me all the time. Hallelujah. So that is the main, main uh, motivation, main reason to come to God to pray is to have a close relationship with God instead of just asking for things. Is to have a close relationship with God and then God will give us all the things we need. Motivate people to pray. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will, shall be done for you. So He can do great things for us. He wants to do great things for us. So He has ability to do great things for us and He is generous to do great things, to give us blessings to us. So if we abide in Him, when we abide in Him, when we stay in Him, and then my words stay in you. So when Jesus' words stay in us, that we, uh, you know, it's not just praying, but also it tells us that when we pray, we let the Word of God stay in us, that we let the Word of God be our master. We, you know, we submit to the Word of God. We obey the Word of God. We trust the Word of God. So the Word of God abides in us, and you ask what you desire and will be done for you. So God treasures the relationship with Him. And when we have a close relationship with Him and let His Word stay in us and guide us, He will answer our prayers. So it's not just asking for, uh, for selfish needs, but we let God's Word guide us. And God's will guide us to pray for what? And when a person follows God's Word, his prayers are not just about his needs, but about the relationship with God and his kingdom. So when a person follows God's word, his prayers are not just about his needs, but about relationship with God and his kingdom. So when we you know, care about God and care about his words, so uh, our prayer is about his word also. We want to live in his word. When his word abides in us, we abide in Jesus, then uh, what we ask, you will ask, and what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I hope we all have confidence that God wants to bless us and God wants to have a close relationship with Him. Okay, and then motivate people to wait on the Lord. Now we should learn to pay attention to the voice of God. John 10, 27. My sheep hear, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So here, God's nature is that He will speak to us. That He will, uh, Jesus' sheep will hear His voice, that means He will speak to us. He's a speaking God. He will speak to us. He will give us thoughts. 
He will give us ideas. Now, actually, we have ideas from God all the time. For instance, we have the desire to love Him, the desire to obey Him, the desire to preach the gospel. All this came from God. This actually are God's voice, that we have this constant voice from God that motivate us to obey Him, to respond to Him, to, uh, to serve Him, uh, to love Him, de to depend on Him, to, to trust in Him. So God speaks to us all the time. So that's His nature. He's a speaking God. And then He will cause us to be able to hear His voice. Actually, when we, when we submit to God, when we obey God, we are responding to God's voice. God draw us to come to Him. When we uh, pray, we are responding to God's voice because then God calls us to pray to Him and then we we'll respond to Him. When we obey Him, we are responding to God's voice to tell us to obey Him. When we serve Him, we are responding to God's voice. So God is constantly giving us the desire, the motivation to serve Him, to love Him, to trust in Him. And then when we respond to that, then God will guide us more. So that is responding to God's guidance. And when we obey God more, the more He will guide us. Very often I notice that when I'm teaching, God will give me more teaching on the, at a time of teaching. At a time of teaching, God will give me more thoughts. So God is speaking to us constantly. So I hope we all will pay attention to the voices, uh, the voice that come to us. Okay, Jesus does speak to us in different ways. And all Christians can hear God's voice. All Christians can hear God's voice. He moves us to repent. Now, every Christian have, you know, when they sin, they'll hear the voice of God to repent and to follow His Word. When we read the Word of God, then His Word will remind us to obey Him. That, you know, that God speaks to us. The, the one voice every Christian hears is the voice to repent. That when Christians, uh, born-again Christians, when they sin, for sure they will feel a, a voice inside them to tell them to repent. And also when they read the Word of God or, or when they hear uh, Christian messages, then they will want to obey God. That is the voice of God uh, speaking to them. And also God guides us to make decisions. When we want to serve God, is God guiding us to make decisions. Or uh, God guides us to forgive someone, to love someone, to do evangelism to someone. It's God speaking to us to guide us. And He stops us when we make, from making mistakes. For instance, when we're about to sin, God's voice will speak to us. Now, it's not, sometimes it's a voice, sometimes it's just thoughts come to us. He will stop us making mistakes, stop us sinning. He tells us the needs of some people so that we'll go and help them. So the more we pray to Him and wait on Him, the more we can hear His voice. And His voice will guide us to His wonderful plan. So the more we pray to Him and listen to Him, the more we'll notice thoughts come to us. Now, don't just think of voice as audible voice or an idea that comes up. But think of just any kind of motivation we have. Any kind of motivation we have to obey Him, that is the voice of God. Uh, now, there are some things, there are some points that uh, to let us know for sure that some voices are from God. Now, first, the voices from God are uh, in accordance with the Bible. It will not contradict the Bible. Okay, first, it will not contradict the Bible. Second, it does help us to have a breakthrough or help us in a situation, give us wisdom in certain situations. So it does help us. And also, sometimes it could be against our will. For instance, sometimes a person wants to sin, and then the voice will tell him not to sin. Or a person wants to chase after a girl, and then God tells him to stop doing that. So that's against his will. Or he wants to do something for himself. He wants to uh, make some money, and then God tells him to stop. So it could be against his will. Uh, so when it's when it's against His will and it's accordance, in accordance with the God's Word, then it's more sure to be God's Word, that God's speaking to us when it's something against our will. Now, sometimes it's not against our will because uh, if we obey God, you know, as much as we can, then 
very often we already have this desire to love God, to obey God, to serve God. We already have this desire. So, um, so in this situation, then the voice of God will be in accordance with, would be in agree, agreement with our own voice. That, you know, uh, in Philippians 2.13, it says that, you know, God is God who works in us to will and to act according to His purpose. So it's God who works in us to will, to make the decision, to will and to act according to His good purpose. So it's, as Christians, the more we grow, the more our, our will will be in agreement with God's will. The more we, we obey God and love God, the more our hearts will be in accordance with God's will. And then when we pray, very often it's God's will coming to us, and then we, we agree with it because we actually want that happen. So that shows that it's God putting His will in us in the first place. So we have this will, this desire to obey God. So I hope you all pay attention to God's voice. Now God's voice can come in any time. Sometimes when we are praising God, sometimes when we are waiting on God. Now there are different ways to wait on God. One way is to listen to some Christian songs and then we watch Christian music and then meditate on God and sometimes some thoughts will come up. For instance, God might, uh, might give us a thought to forgive this person, to start doing evangelism, to help this person, to be kind to a certain person, to forgive someone, or to do some kind of ministry that we never thought of before. So sometimes when we listen to Christian music, or when we read the Bible, meditate on the Bible, and sometimes God speaks to us. And also sometimes some people just uh, don't play any music, just think about the goodness of God. Just think about how good God is. And then they just meditate on God's goodness and then sometimes thoughts will come into Him. And we must be very careful to discern. Uh, you know, sometimes it could be our own thought. For instance, someone says, Oh, uh, I, I pray and then I... Uh, and he says to a girl, Oh, uh, uh, and I had this thought that you are my wife. Now, we must be very careful about that. It could be this person really likes the girl, and so he thought that, well, uh, in my prayer, I already also like the girl, therefore it's God's voice to me. Now, we must be very careful to discern any kind of uh, decision. Uh, we want to discern in different ways, whether it's from God or is it from our own desire. Okay, so I hope we all discern the voice of God, our voice, and the voice of our sinful nature. Now, sometimes it could be the voice of the sinful nature or even voice of Satan. Now for mature Christians, very often our voice could agree. Actually, we already agree with God's voice. But it's God who gives us some breakthrough, like how we can expand in our ministry. So God can give us those thoughts, how to expand in the ministry. Okay, now, now all those are uh, uh, Verses about the grace of God and nature of God. And here is a warning. The Bible does have warning. But our main motivation should be from grace. So just now I show you how to motivate people to love God and to pray. And here is a warning. James 4.2 You lust and do not have. You murder and cover and cannot obtain. You fight and war yet you do not have. Because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on your pleasures. So this is warning that why people, they lust and don't have it. They murder and cover and cannot obtain. And they fight and war, and yet you do not have because you do not ask. So first warning is people who don't pray. And then second, you pray and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on your own pleasures. You just want it for yourself, for your own for your own uh, benefit. You just want to, you know, to, uh, for lust or for earn, uh, getting more money. So there's a warning to people who pray for, with the wrong motives. So for instance, a person, uh, he likes a, a, a non-Christian girl, and then he prays to God, please let me marry that, uh, that non-Christian girl, and 
he just warned that non-Christian girl. And then uh, he keep praying, Lord, give her to me, give her to me. And God is not pleased with that. He can pray for the salvation of the girl, but he should not pray and say, God, I want her, I want her, please give her to me. So in prayer, we don't just insist our own will when it's against God's will to marry a non-Christian girl. So we then would say, okay, Lord, help me to submit to you and not to ask for things for my own pleasure. Okay, God wants to bless all real Christians. And many Christians have many problems in their lives because they don't pray or because they pray with wrong motives. To, so they just want more money. They just want things they want. And then and what happens is then they don't get what they want and they are not blessed. So the best way to be blessed by God is to love God, to delight in God, to obey Him, to serve Him, to glorify Him all the time and set our eyes on God and not on the benefit. Set on our eyes on God and God will bless our whole life so that our whole life will be blessed. That's the main motivation with the grace of God. And the reminder is the law that if we don't pray, we don't obey, we don't love God, then there will be uh, uh, then there can be destruction and also Satan can, can come to steal and kill and destroy and we can give, the, give to Satan a foothold. So we don't, so there are warnings, but the main motivation should come from God's grace and that we are motivated to serve God and love God and pray to Him. Okay, now if you have any questions, please ask and uh, and uh, you know, I hope you all have confidence in God and hope you understand this motivation with God's grace. Actually, when we motivate people to obey God in any way, we can use God's grace. For instance, you do evangelism because God has a heart to save people. It's God who moves in your heart so that you want to save people. And then when you want to save people, God is very happy to you and He'll give you the power of the Holy Spirit. He'll, you, he'll give you anointing. He'll give you His uh, presence so that you can help people. And then when you do evangelism, for sure He'll reward you and bless your whole life. So whatever it is uh, that what we want to motivate people to do, we tell them, when you do these things, it's God who draws you to obey Him. And it's God who gives you strength and spiritual gifts to do this. And when you do this, God is very happy. And He'll for sure bless your whole life and your life will go higher and higher. So we can motivate people with God's grace. At the same time, we can give them some warning. If you don't obey God, you don't serve God, then you are a lazy servant. And a servant that is totally lazy, that doesn't have any fruit at all, that he could have eternal damnation. So we want to be sure that we bear fruit, that we let God stay in our life and be our master and our Lord, that we want to do good to the little ones in Matthew 25, do good to the little ones, to bless them, to bless the Christians around us, to bless the non-Christians so that they, be they believe in Jesus. So we want to serve God and then God is happy with me. That's the main motivation. And then, uh, but then the reminder is, if we don't do that, then we're a lazy servant. We're wasting our time, our life. And, and then we also give Satan a fruitful.